first things first in our winners match. Guys, walk us through the map set. Oh yeah. Peace and love versus Ataraxia Scott. We're going to Oasis first. So again, we're trying to bring this up. A little bit of a rematch here. Peace and love ended up taking uh, Ataraxia in the Swiss stage. All the way to three maps. Did go all the way, but it was a 2-1 scoreline at the very end of it. And in fact, Peace and love only uh, lost two of their games in the Swiss stage. And that was against teams you'd expect them to lose against. That was EXO and... Uh, Twisted Minds. So you're like, wow, this team's actually pretty strong. Going almost losses and then losing to the best teams or some of the best teams. So, you know, I've got big, I've got big hopes and uh, dreams for Peace and Love coming into this series. Yeah, but you can't underrate Ataraxia as well, right? Like, because they're, they're the same, you know, they went eight and three. The only one that they lost, which maybe you can argue, oh, you know, this was one that was unexpected, was against Peace uh, peace and Love. So Ataraxia is definitely the fan favorites as well. You saw just from the fan vote, 85% of people believe Ataraxia is going to fix what happened last time and get this win. So let's get into it as we see both teams rolling out on the Winston, which is interesting already. Little dive, I like this. City Center, yeah, no, kind of classic. Although a lot of teams, it's like reminds me of Samoa, like uh, the point with Samoa, I forget the exact name of the map, but the one, the stage that looks exactly like City Center in the corner, like in the middle, and you can just play a wrister and then just dance around the whole thing. So I'm a little bit shocked to see, downtown, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm a little shocked to see Double Winston. I was expecting to see a little bit of a wrister at least. Point's been unlocked, but classic City Center fashion. No one's gonna cap until under a couple of minutes into the round. Yeah, because the, the ability to just sort of kite the point and dance around on the point uh, out of line of sight is pretty good. We're going to see eyes going on getting very low. They are going to live, but it might at least force them off of the point. So first cap should go over to Ataraxia, and I think actually falls as well. Yeah, all right. Five picking up. A sweet little kill on... Ooh, nice couple of headshots from Fire there. On the Cass. Cass versus Soj. Okay, Scott. Okay, definitive. Like, I'm going to take your word as gospel. What's better, Cass or Soj in these matchups? Okay, so here's the thing. I really like the Soj for the pick potential. Onto the Tracer as well. We saw a lot of that yesterday where your ability to just sort of delete the Tracer is a threat they have to deal with. But on the other side as well, the Hinder Grenade is such a big tool for both the Tracer and the Winston. So if you are Islam and you're playing against his Cassidy, if you get hit by the Hinder Grenade, you need to play around your bubbles. You need to be playing smart. So there's multiple threats. I don't think there is, you know, a right answer. I think it's whatever the player's thinking. Double rush coming in. Fire's already dead. There's the six from Shax. Wins to trade for the Casty. That sound barrier from Ataraxia should see them through at least a portion of this fight. I still kill with a primal rage and still controlling that point too. Easy escape too. Little double leap back to the rest of their team. Ataraxia still in control. Lauren now only just spawning in with that railgun, that overclock coming in for uh, peace and love, but time's a ticking. Yeah, and it, that, that's the important thing. They're more than happy to trade back these ultimates time and time again because they have the the uh, the point control. Unfortunately, here's the issue with the casting. You have a high noon going into an overclock. They're going to go aggressive with it. Great boot, though. Nice four-man beat. Lorena already taken down a dollar. There's the Primal Rage. Fine trouble. Also just escorted away from his supports. Thanks to the Winston Primal. And now, yeah, I mean, surely this is a cap. For peace and love now there we go psycho picking up the next lauren as well getting two kills in that fight peace and love finally securing that point but 82 percent are on the wire now yeah it's like one fight territory but a lot of ultimates used but surprisingly lauren never had to use the overclock so now they can hold this as almost like a threat fading out of axia in action they're gonna go incredibly aggressive go towards the spawn doors where there's less cover hasn't been able to find anything and ice loses his life for it you've got to get that Trained kill back at least Garland dodging out of the way of that last railgun shot. Managing to swift step away. Small trade, like you said, Scott, about Adaraxia. They can juggle point here quite easily. But Peace and Love are going to make sure it's a little bit hard for them. Force a couple of ultimates, potentially. No ultimates available for Peace and Love either. And Adaraxia do have that rush if they want to guarantee their point cap. I say that, Abik's got a rush too. My bad. So both rush is laid down. Lauren's already fallen. Shaxx with so a rare low. miss on the pulse bomb, but yeah, peace and love just get wiped off of the map. And Ataraxia gonna control that point. They got sound barrier too. If they want to go early, they can. This might be their round. Yeah, they know that Peace and Love is going to have to rush out of this spawn door to get to the point. So Atarax is actually stepping up. You can see putting out so much damage, making it difficult for them to close that distance. Lauren over to the Sombra, maybe trying to get to the point, but is anyone gonna make it? 
All right, there's the Trancer King. Ooh, just. All right, it was the Tracer that ended up touching in the end, but that means the back line quite vulnerable. Fire pretty low now. Virus lands. There's the High Noon. Oh, oh Lauren can't go anywhere. Nice little boop there into the corner. So the Trancer King hit the wall. 99% for Ataraxia now. And they still got a Primal Rage if they need to use it. Peace and Love coming back on the Doom Fist. Oh, Psycho gets shut down. A swift headshot from Fi should end it all. There we go. Ataraxia with the first round. Yeah, and that, that all goes back to what we talked about with like that 80%, that long fight that was taken after the cap was made. Adorax was just able to build up so much percentage. So as soon as Peace and Love made one mistake, which was that aggressive overclock push, they got punished for it. It gets flipped back and Adoraxia just firmly in control. So that's kind of what we expect from Adoraxia. Peace and Love not coming out of the gates too strong. Let's see as we see different things moving over to University, much more of an Orissa map, and it looks like both teams are going to go that direction. Yeah, makes so much sense. Guard is definitely not going to stick on the Weaver, but all good. I mean, okay, yeah. No, no, no. No stick on Weaver, surely. There you go. Kiri. Yeah, just both playing the Arisa. You can't, you, I mean, you can play Monkey here, I suppose, but is just so good at holding down this point. It, the problem with the Winston is it can be difficult to take space and not get punished, while Arisa can also just stand almost forever on this point. So it's just an easier uh, composition to play. You can see Peace and Love, they want the high ground with Lovin' on the Sojin, while Ataraxia, they're going to concede it and take this, like, mini health pack room that is pretty safe to play out of. But they're going to have to be careful about getting stuffed in here. As you can see, Ice already stepping up. But there's actually a huge flank coming from Ataraxia onto the high ground. They want to fight for it. Yeah, Lauren's in trouble, but perfectly landing those healing grenades. Abik healing their DPS up. And Psycho take care, uh, taking care of Harry Keck as well. Peace and Love in a good spot right now. They can find a couple more staggers. Maybe they're good for another one. Shax is trying to stay out of LOS for as long as possible here. Wait for the team to regroup. He's yeah. not in a good set so far. You can see why teams don't try and attack people on the high ground fight. Just instantly got booped off in that last round. And that's going to leave Lauren just sitting on his high ground. Once again, going to take the mini pack. Shax winning the Tracer duel over Psycho. All right, okay. Shax with one. He's under a lot of pressure. Forced to use that lamp. And you can see now fight just applying themselves on the point. That's a free Actually, cap too. That's it. just one tracer pick, and that was a flip for Ataraxia. I, I, I agree with this decision by Peace and Love. You're better off, instead of fighting for the point in a 4v5, just hold the high ground with your four players. Ataraxia don't want to go high ground. Just wait for Psycho to come back, and then you're back in a good position. You refuse to giving Railgun charge there to Laura. However, Shax is still kind of peppering the, ba uh, the back line right now, the front line even. Ice is taking a whole lot of damage. Shax now playing. In that Kiriko rush, those... Oh, okay. Abik's actually just going to snipe him out before that soundbar even hits. Terra Surge comes through. Abik in a lot of trouble still getting booped out of that immortality field. Psycho, sights firmly set on Gala. Forces the swift step. Recall straight into the line of sight. Averike takes down the Orisa. The front line down. And Ataraxia lose that point. 33% now to 40 in building for peace and love. You can see Anorax is really struggling to take this fight because they don't have the map control. They don't have the high ground. Oh, aggressive. Oh, the Terra Surge in the back. No, nope, Suzu moment. Don't worry. We're good. Oh, and uh, <laughs> I mean, there's no way you are killing the Orisa, even with a dead eye. Like, at that range with a four fight, ain't no way. Nice little kill, and uh, they can just keep pushing on the pressure here, filing on the pressure. I mean, luckily, Adoraxia spawns pretty close, and Vi can get back just in time, but Ooh. the amount of damage they're taking that will be a swift retreat. Yeah, uh, now, Adoraxia, we're only 20% remaining. They still don't have any ultimates. Trying to get Gala up, aggressive window coming out. Are they going to get any punishes on this? Psycho's Pulse Ball gets eaten by the Spear Spin, but no picks. Oh, the boop. Rest in peace, Lauren, who was uh, acting as a double agent there, was playing on the side of uh, Peace and Love. They were in their back line, and no one was paying attention to him. There's the flip. All right, okay. And uh, Railgun, that overclock, not used to his full effectiveness there by Lauren. Didn't even have the chance to pull it before they got booped. A big tried to use the window, but... Ataraxa are already rotating around the other side, so they're just almost full committed into a disadvantageous situation. Oh, early uh, rush here as well. They want to punish the people in spawn as they're split early when you were punished. It's a great aggressive play here from Ataraxia. Yeah, they still got a sound barrier too. They could just sound barrier the uh, overclock if they really want to, although there's a lot of places to kind of escape from the LOS. 
There's a sound barrier for Adorexia as well on Dollar, so Lauren gets onto the high ground, but it, I think I don't have any targets to pop this overclock. Yeah, I mean, everything can just hide in this small room, right? They actually just can use that uh, sound barrier to make sure Lauren has to be a little bit more careful. Later beat here coming through for a piece of love. There's double terror surge. Someone's going to have to take off soon. It's actually a beat that ends up going down to the terror surge, but Eula's there to help clean up. Just help Ice secure the kill on the Orisa. 90% for Ataraxia now. They're still in control as far as that high noon. Yulu does manage to get out of the line of sight. Oh, wow. Psycho not quite so lucky. Just a very messy fight right now as Lauren's just on the point, just trying to get that flip of peace and love. They're going to have, have to come back rather quickly onto this point. A nice little punch out of the LOS of the healers too. As both Doomfist now just trying to duel it out. Yulu's just getting absolutely rolled in the front line of fire, just holding down this point. Ataraxia are going to have to take this map. It's got 99% to 91. Map number one to Ataraxia. And a lot of that final fight for me goes to... I don't know how a beak was caught by the Terror Surge. There's Terror Surge. They were spinning yeah. for a long time, just waiting for the other one to blink first. And somehow a beak gets caught from that. As much as they trade back picks, that main healing being lost from a beak on the Baptiste, or they just can't take that long sustained fight and they eventually fall out. So it looked like Peace and Love were in the driver's seat in that round, but eventually Ataraxia taking it back and taking the first map in a pretty convincing fashion. Potentially a little boop, not entirely sure, because yeah, they That's were just kind of chilling. They were standing there and that was it. Like, oh, okay. We just look at each other, I suppose, lo lovingly, longingly, just waiting for one of us to eventually uh, slam down the spear. It's so fun. Watching Orisa meta, I think it's quite funny, because um, most of the time, if the Orisa just... It reminds me of Malga in a way, but a little bit more fun. At least the Orisa's have that cool <laughs> abilities, right? But, like, with Orisa, it's just like, okay, we both fortify, look at each other. Okay, it's time to Terra Surge. Okay, it's time to Terra Surge. Like, shaking hands emoji, like, okay, we're ready to go. <laughs> it's, uh, it's so ridiculous sometimes. But yeah. Fly had a, a bit of a standout performance on the Casty here compared to the Surgeon, which we were, is what we were speaking about earlier. Yeah, Fly, Fly is a player that like has been around for uh, what feels like a while. You know, I've always seen him as a pretty good hit scan that's always been you know, poking and putting around. And you can see how the Cassidy is just able to get more consistent damage output and just sort of play around that. Also, High Noon, as much as it might not be as strong as an ultimate uh, as Overclock, when you know you have the pick potential of Overclock, High Noon is a great zoning tool that can be used as a team. And you saw that multiple times uh, throughout this map. But there was a lot of great ultimate usage just across the board. On in a lot of these situations, you can see they understand the matchup very well, especially in the Orisa versus Orisa. Understanding you want to be playing aggressive, you want to be moving as a unit. But, yeah, I don't know. It's one of those things. I'm hoping we get to see this highlight of what happened in the Terra Surges and see a big fall over. It doesn't look like we will, but there is a lot of... The thing that I'm excited about as well is we don't have one team that's just like, hey... We want to play Orisa. We want to play Orisa all over the place. We saw a bit of dive. We saw a bit of Orisa. That matters a lot for the map pool as we go further into the series. Yeah, exactly that. Obviously, the map pool has been decided before the series because the team's at a, a pick and ban phase. Um, so we'll see where we end up going next. I mean, Oasis is a bit of a weird one. Oasis always feels like a little bit of a coin flip depending on like how your team functions because you're just kind of hoping... If you're a team that only plays like only plays the Arisa, only plays Dive, or like only plays Ram or whatever, like you're hoping for the maps that are very dependent um, on those comps and like are very good for those comps. But both teams willing to kind of flex to different, uh, different stars is also a really good thing and especially in a meta that's kind of up in the air right now. And uh, yeah, I think we're in a good spot um, in terms of the meta and I think it's helping these teams out very well. And Apparently, peace and love too. No scrims, you know. No scrims. That's fine. Just a mixed team. Just a fun team. Getting a well, place. You have to four. hope they scrimmed this week. No, like you know, they're like they're like, hey, we made it out of Swiss with no practice. Clueless. Let's just continue to not practice. Honestly, this seems to be working out for us so far. <laughs> that's the Overwatch mentality, at least. You know, I mean, yeah, we're yeah. full hey. fun team. Exactly, four fun teams, zero scrims. You don't want to jinx it by then scrimming and just taking it too seriously. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like gamer it mentality back. where you're like, well, if we don't practice, then when we lose, we have the best excuse we can have. It was like, hey, didn't try. You know, that that's sort of the twisted minds mentality going into the Swiss stage. So it, I, I, it gives you a little bit of false confidence when you play with that mentality of like, hey, you know, we're just for fun. You know, don't take it too seriously. It gives you that ability to sort of not stress about these big match day games, but you know, potentially it could come back to haunt them because... There's a lot of nuance that comes with these metas, uh, especially with the Orisa. They look very solid right now, obviously very skilled players, but as we move over to Pada Iso, you'd have to assume both teams are going to go back to the Winston. Maybe we'll see something a little different with the Diva, but there's so much high ground, you probably aren't going to be playing the Orisa. 
Yeah, there's a fair amount of Diva uh, recently. Obviously, Hawk loves to play the Diva when he can. So, yeah, maybe we'll just see a little bit of that. But probably the Winston, I'd imagine. Esperanza, of course, is the third map in this series. And Suravasa, and then Rialto, by the looks of it, um, in the yeah. top right. So, yeah, as we jump into map number two, the team with no scrims versus Ataraxia. <laughs> I do, I do love it. Peace and love versus Ataraxia. Ataraxia taking the first map, though. And I will remind you, of course, when they did face up against in Swiss stage, it was Peace and Love taking the series two and one. So there's been a lot of revenge matches over the last couple of days, in fact. Like, a lot of teams meeting each other in Swiss stage at some point. And we'll see if uh, Ataraxia can beat them out this time around. That, that was one of the cool things about the Swiss stage and stage two compared to the Swiss stage and stage one. In stage one, because, you know, it was new, face it, everything was just very new. There was a lot of just like wonky seating, but you saw it in stage two. You saw more of the best teams facing each other and good matchups to really determine, hey, who really should be the number one seed? Who should get to the top level? I think we yes. talked about it yesterday. SSG beat 11 of the top 16 teams to get that number one seed. So it's you're really seeing a better seeding overall as we move into these Group stages so it's been cool to be able to see as you said these salty runbacks by teams that are very solid and evenly matched all right Shax so it's what you got quick wrap on see if they can land a quick headshot against the Borrega or not there's almost no way Ooh, that was close that was very close though all right go with the brig as well not too surprising on this map on this point at least it's just so easy to get your backline into a defensible. Ooh, way too aggressive by Eric Ek. Ooh, uh, do trade back. Shaq's getting a sick one clip onto the uh, Diana. MCD trade getting Lauren as well. So if they just slow things down a little bit, wait for Eric Ek to get back. Deal with the stag strag uh, strag uh, stragglers is what I was going They for. don't even Words need to do that. Hard. Yeah, that's a, that should be a pretty easy first count. I mean, is there going to be a touch? They're in position to do so. I can see Psycho. They're okay. outline. Yeah, okay. Psycho is in. They do get the touch. 66% 60, 60, in building. Ice is also going to jump at the front line. Just popping down that bubble so his supports can get into a line of sight of him. But the problem is now, where's the CDs? And where's your brig? Well, nowhere to be found. Shax with a nice assassination kill. And that should be the point. Oh, they're going to go for a retouch. I'm assuming just burn extra time here. Although, killing fire is always a good thing. But the problem is, MCD, Gala, they're alive, and they're on high ground, and uh, good luck. I mean, maybe a duplication would be uh, the difference maker here, but with Psycho going down, that will be the point. You can just see the amount of damage that's going on to both of these Winston players. It's so, you know, I feel bad for tank players in the, in this matchup because your job as a, as a Winston is like, everyone's like, I need you to take all the space, but also not die and deal with an Anna Brig who can sleep you and whip you and push you around. It's just, it's honestly a very precarious situation. That's what makes the best the best. Oh, huge stick on Abik. With no Suzu's on the field as well. Shax has been a menace in this round so far. He's still got it. I hate to break it to everybody, every Shax doubter, he's still got it. Who's a Shax doubter? Let me at him. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Some people on Twitter probably. Oh, fires are going down again. It's right in precarious position. With, oh, uh, the preemptive sleep from MCDs. He sees the dupe coming in. And then they kill onto Psycho as well. Well, you have to deal with the second trace out by that. It should be all good, though. There's a rally. Uh, that overhead is not armor anymore, but the overhealth is uh, good enough. Fire gets some revenge as Lauren went a little bit too deep there after the duplication. Peace and love. Uh, kind of crumbling. Four minutes to go for Ataraxia. And they're going to round this final corner 2.2. They need to be careful about losing any staggers here. You can see Adorax is going to try and go aggressive. Huge nade on a garlic. Can Good they move. keep him alive? Yes, they can. Nah, uh, uh, no, wait. Rest in peace. Mega health pack Take him. But MCD was not in LOS. Nice sleep. Nice taking a quick nap. That's a lot of damage. Oh, my Ooh. fi. Damage boost on the Echo. Insta-killing a full HP Winston. I have never seen a health bar disappear so quickly. Yeah, you, you can tell they probably wanted to pop the primal in that situation, but I don't even think they got the opportunity. Oh, nice play by Psycho, trading back onto Eric Ek. That should slow this push down, and yeah, Adoraxia are going to have to fall back. So Psycho keeping them in the fight, especially with Gala falling a little bit earlier. And those were a couple of big ults used by Adoraxia. The second point, you really need the defensive ultimates to be able to just sort of engage into your dive, and they don't have any of them left. Oh, fire getting Lauren. It's an echo diff right there. All right, the Primal Rage is going to escort one of the supports back to support. MCD under a lot of trouble. 
Uh, peace and love really making it hurt now for the backline to step up through these streets. Fighters end up getting, uh, yeah, three kills in the final a couple of moments there. Shaq's coming up with a big kill too. Somehow, fight is still going. Double tracer, free pulse. All chasing. I mean, that's a free kill. Fight just gets, what, four, almost five there? Pulse bomb thrown out. Why not? You're going to uh, return to your original form in just a second. Is there anybody to touch? There isn't. Wow, fight single-handedly carrying that fight. Lost their backline like incredibly early, so it just felt like the fight was going to be lost. But somehow, Fi finds a way. He's actually going to switch off of the Echo over to the Cassidy. I like this switch. You're indoors. High ground isn't as much of a thing, uh, at least being able to be used. It. So just play on the cart. Be a threat that's going to make it harder for Ice to play the game. Duplication and the post bomb for Peace and Love. Oh, the sleep and the Tank anti. Experience. Yep, tank moment. You get slept, anteed, and then pulse bombed as you sleep. Rest in peace. Somehow, Adaraxia keep trading back. Yes, they even if they're losing one player, they're trading back, they're getting punishes. And it feels like Peace and Love are just never able to sort of take advantage oh. of their advantages. And now Shax gets Ewer as well. And now it's 5v4. God, Shax. God damn. There's an Anna boost, but the Winston's already half HP and no Primal Rage as well if he wants to try to prolong this fight. Lauren is pretty low, and you can see that Ice has to get out of there very fast. Receives a nade from the Ana too, just to keep them up. Even with a DPS passive, that's going to help heal the Winston up to full. But he wasn't even able to earn Primal Rage, like very little damage was done. Early rally pot from Gala too. Very early rally. Eric Hake does end up getting stepped in the back line, and here's the duplication. Lauren finding one. The one's good enough. Finding two, in fact. DPS Primal Rage mechanics are going to be in full effect in a couple of percentage points, but I'm not sure going to see too much eyes. of that one. Everybody close your eyes. Don't look. There's a uh, Eric Hake not really getting much value from the Primal themselves. I think using it to just stay alive, that would have been ill-advised, but they do manage to trade back onto Psycho, so they're pushing the car, but this is the I most mean, precarious position to take because look at how defensive their backline can play. The spawn doors are so cl close for peace and love. So Adaraxia is going to get dope, but they're actually going to counter that big stick by Psycho, though. Massive stick, yeah. Filled with confidence. Were peace and love. They had a lot of ults, but they burned all of them at once, pretty much. They used that primal and the rally and the pulse. They have nothing left. Zero. I mean, they're going to get Nano halfway through the fight, you'd imagine, unless Shax has got a, a pulse bomb with the beak's name on it. But leave the poor supports alone for just a second, Shax. <laughs> I feel like every time Shax has a pulse bomb, he's just been sticking so consistently, and he's going to have a pretty, pretty flank here. Well, actually, just going to go for the C9. Little Try and just make point. sure the car continues to move. Make it uh, continue it to be a threat that they have to keep dealing with. But MCD is going to lose his life. And now Ice is going very aggressive. MCD just spawning in. Carla Sagarin. It feels like uh, Tracy needed to retreat there quicker, a lot quicker. Yeah. You're Sagarin yourself. And now you're putting yourself in final fight where maybe you could have had a, a couple of fights at least. One minute, 15 seconds to go. And yep, there's a Beaks Nano. So they got something for this fight. Same with Lauren too, in fact, uh, with the duplication. Yeah, the, the issue you have to deal with is that Ice is going to be able to get such a free dive. You pair that with the Nano Boost as well. It's just going to cleave so much damage. So Adaraxia can't really stack up. And that's why you see them playing a little bit slower. They don't want to move too far forward. They want to bait Ice into the fight before they all start grouping up. And in goes the Nano. Oh, oh yeah, just slowly marching towards the back line. Looks like I'm watching a slow-mo Winston. Not only just jumping around, but it's just a WM one. I see does end up getting slept. Duplication came out for Lauren as well. 30 seconds to go. Anoraxia against the ropes with a nano boost with a primal. Rally. They have the all uh, the ults and they have the tools right now. Gala needs to get up to this round. Good name. Really Huge good name, name for MCD. You know, just way too far up. That's a big oh, pulse bomb. I mean, uh, a big lot of sticky bombs. MCD gets an assassinated, but still managed to get the nano out. So Gala survives to tell the tale. And uh, Riley, that oh, overhill so just stacking back. up. But it has moved a fair fight. far back as well. So potentially here, Peace and Love can come back. Psycho's going to at least be able to touch and has a pulse bomb. Eric X in the back line trying to prime with the supports, but they do a jo good job of keeping each other alive. So there's no no one picked to be able to deal with this. Shax falls, the person who has... One more touch, one more touch. Oh, there's no touch. Shax ended up going down to a whip shot there. You can see in the kill feed. And this primal rage just proving a little bit more uh, tough for Adaraxia to deal with than they imagined.
I don't know if it felt like Ataraxia were looking for a flanker or something, but it didn't feel like they were playing aggressively enough to be able to punish that backline. If they had all followed in with Erekek into that small room, punished the backline, and then regrouped on the card, it might have been a better situation, but instead what happens is Erekek goes in alone with the Primal, unable to kill either of the supports because they're able to help each other, and then from there, Ataraxia just didn't really have any tools left to be able to end up closing the map. So, great hold by Peace of Love. They had about four minutes on that third point, three minutes on that third point so able to stabilize but now it's peace and love's opportunity how are they going to get through this first and second points which can be incredibly precarious yeah they'll be pretty much running it down on second that being anorexia just to see if Peace and Love are going to play the Anna Brig on attack. A, a lot of teams opt to not play the Anna Brig on the attack right. because it's, as you saw for Ataraxia, it can be di very difficult for them to move forward, step into step into an effective range without just getting dove on time and time again. So if you're on the attacking team with the Lucio Kiriko, everybody can play aggressive. You don't need to defend anybody. It's just full out aggression, be able to sort of punish the opposition before they can get value of the extra healing of the Anna and the Brig. Yeah, Anna's just so tough to play right now in the current meta. It's like only sp for specific points. And I feel like you have to have it with a break too. You cannot have it with a Lucio. You need the extra defensive tools for the Ana, Otherwise, she just gets a blown up. Anywhere where there's a lot of flanks where Tracer can get onto the back line, it'd just be very difficult. Well, on this uh, first attack, let's get a quick listen in. Uh, three, three, two, two, one. I'm going for Kree. I'm on Kree. I'm on Kree. Go with the Break, 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 don't touch. Uh, Chris a touch, Chris a touch. I'm sleeping. Out. I'm sleeping out. I'm sleeping out. I'm sleeping out. Creep, bottom right, creep, bottom right. Nuri, Nuri, shoot Trace, shoot Trace, shoot Trace. Target, 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 target. Shoot point, shoot point, shoot point, shoot point. Shoot point, shoot point. Yeah, I bubble him off, I bubble him off. Shoot monkey, kill monkey. I'm stuck, okay. I walk into your boat. Trace? I thought they were all what? Boy, that felt like they had it. Oh, Shax. Oh, Shax just wins it again. He's just too clutch, man. It felt like they had it, yeah. I mean, they were trying to shoot the tray, and then you could hear halfway through the comms, it was like, targets. Like, we need to call yeah. somebody. Someone needs to die. Everybody's got to shout one name, and then we'll look at them. It's one of those situations where they had a plan, right? They want to stop the doors. They were trying to stop people from touching. But as soon as they touched, they all of a sudden lost targets, and people got a little confused of, like, who we need to punish. And as soon as that distraction comes in, they got punished for it, and Shaxx just rips through the rest of their team. So they do get two ticks on the board, and ultimates are coming up. Let's see if they can get another effective dive. They're on the brig with the Good rally. Luck. Maybe, maybe they're gonna be able to fight into this with the rally health going out. Yeah, I'm not sure. Even this primal rage, dislodging the rally somewhat, but dislodging them back to the rest of the team. <laughs> so everybody's getting even more over health. Nice does end up going down on the Winston, and Fi just hides behind the brig shield, hits the high noon. That'd be all she wrote. Anoraxia cleaning up on this first point, still with only two ticks, peace and love now. A couple more fights in them. They got one minute and 40 seconds to go, and it's actually a switch up at the back line. Break Ana now. Yeah, once you've used those two ultimates, I think yeah, you recognize you're not going to get those ultimates up again. Just switch. You can potentially get more value from the Break Ana. Oh, you can see Look at some aggressive MC play from MCD. MCD. Where is MCD going? He's straight to the back line. They do it. Okay, he just needs a peek. Sure. <laughs> what is MCD doing? I mean, they all trade their supports, but duplication now available. I mean, Shaq has to go absolutely uh, bananas here to try and find a, a fight win because they only need 33%. Shaq is back on the point. Insta-killed. Okay, MCD, we need to talk, buddy. Okay, no, okay, so let me defend my boy MCD for okay. just, uh, just a little bit, okay? So obviously they didn't have many ultimates to, to speak for, so they felt like they needed to do something different. Maybe too much different. Maybe they could have been, you know, they could have met somewhere in the middle of that, but unfortunately it doesn't work out. Peace and Love trade back their backlines effectively, and they ended up getting the first point, but that was a lot of time off the cap. Three minutes remaining for Peace and Love to get through this second point. Yeah, I mean, you take that, I suppose. That is like such the Rambo Ana moment. I'm just going to run into the back line, nade somebody, and then just win a duel, and then uh, we'll right? <laughs> Surely. Yeah, surely. I got my one in chat, and then uh, hopefully yeah, exactly. my team clutches up. Kalulus. <laughs>
Dice force the recall there by Shax. Oh, dice for death. Six HP, doesn't it? The recall. Oh my god. Nervous is still calling him Superman. I don't actually do end up losing their Winston. Yeah, and that's good. That's going to force them to back up, but they should still have this positioning in a good spot. Lots of ultimates coming up. Anoraxia should have five for this fight. It's going to be a big thing about not over-ulting in this fight. Shaq's Pulse Bomb goes wide, not, isn't going to find anything. Any help us? Maybe they engage with the Nano next. Ooh, there you go. All right, Justin. Oh! See ya. CD. Nice nade. It's my favorite, uh, my favorite way to get a kill on Ana is just lobbing the nade in some of that super low around a corner and they don't even see you. Yeah. just explode in a mist of purple. Oof. Rally coming out from Gala to defend this high ground. Very Trying nice. to push everybody back, yeah. Psycho is just kind of rolling the back line right now, but Shax is perma-checking Psycho. It feels like Shax is doing like 17 jobs at once in this economy, you kind of have to. And like, with Shax, not only kind of checking Psycho, and then also kind of rolling the Winston, applying that DPS passive like permanently onto the Winston, so their supports are also really struggling to keep him up. Shaq is doing a very good job and earned himself another pulse bomb too. Oh, that's and just more time off the clock late by getting Lauren as well. Yeah. And I, I really like your point about Shaq. Like, I think that's your job as a tracer here on this defense. Your job is to control the flanks. And if they're not going to control the flanks, all of a sudden you have a free direction into the back line. So just keep everyone under wraps because that's going to enable your back line to just sit in, the, uh, sit in the back and just do whatever they have to. Because if your back line's free, you're likely going to win the game. Just saw MCD throw that nade, oh, I think, uh, oh, nice whip, yeah. I think Ice just kind of wanted to get out there. Duel against the Ana without a nade. Nano boost thrown out by MCD. Oh, and it's on fire. He's in a perfect position to use it, but that bubble is going to prove quite tough to actually burn through. And it's actually a beat that takes him down. Nano not finding any purchase there. Psycho lands a pulse ball onto MCD. Shaq still got one in his back pocket, throws it out. Doesn't manage to get the Lucio. Actually sticks the shield of all things. This Primal Rage isn't going to last too long with four players looking at you. And there you go. There's the cat for peace and love. 85. We'll call it 86 meters to go now. Now. Anoraxia still have burned a lot of time off the time bag with only two minutes. Peace and love. It's going to be a tough battle onto this third point. I kind of wish we didn't see Erikek and Shax use those two ultimates at the very end to try and turn things around because now they have nothing in the tank. Fortunately, Fi does find Lauren, which is going to slow things down. And now they can do this close spawn hold uh, through this door, force them to run through this choke. So the ultimate differential might not be a big issue. Fi's holding so close as well. You can see Carla's kind of hanging around. Shark ends up going down to a Psycho, of all people. They're going to be able to back off. They know Carla and Fi are off on this uh, little flank here. That bubble's going to stop a lot of that healing, but somehow Fi gets away. Oh, Sound team. barrier to keep them in this fight. Keep Ice up. And a beak ends up using his uh, Suzu to save himself, but ends up uh, paying for it. And the problem is now, I mean, it was a good beat, Scott, to keep them in the fight. But because it was so prolonged and MCD was so far away, there was no pressure on MCD to use an aid on himself. And you, you can play pretty free. And then Carla had the rally for backup. So no big sound barrier available for this fight. Peace and love up to, uh, down to one minute now in their time bank. Yeah, and they had that cost on their sound barrier. Huge ultimate. Big nade by MCD onto the back line. Shouldn't result in anything. Looks like a Beacon Eula just sort of going to stay alive, but Psycho getting the better of Shaxx once again. They wait out this rally, wait out this health. They should be in a good spot, but Lauren falls early again, unable to keep him alive. Maybe that's the issue with not playing the Iron of Brink. They just don't have as many resources to put into Lauren and keep him alive. Really tough, especially when uh, Eric Hack has been diving in so aggressively too, using that bubble to split off a lot of the heals coming out from Habik. I mean, okay, Habik, they've got Rush. They've got Primal on Peace and Love, they've got Psycho's Pulse, like, very winnable here. But the problem is, this nano nay combo has just been the bread and butter of Adaraxia right now. If they try and it's cross here... It up. Yeah, okay, nay goes in. Does they end up landing? Oh, I like it. And here comes the TP into the back line. Oh, but beautiful sleep. The Primal Rage is going to be hidden. A big stick on the Ice Man, it doesn't matter. Ice ends up going down to the Pulse Swarm. They do end up trading, but the spawns are just so good for Adaraxia. And they can keep this Primal Rager flowing too. Make sure the Peace and Love can't push this pain road around this final corner. Good bit of stall tactics here. As Shax ends up going down to the overclock. Lauren now taking the game into their own hands as Peace and Love na uh, narrowly winning that fight. That Golden Box victory is only a couple of meters away from them.
And with Fire and Gala, the only ones to touch, it'll be Peace and Love taking the next map and tying the series up. What a piece. Wow, sick play by Peace and Love. I love the decision, knowing that the Winston is going to want to get nanoed and dive into your backline, and they have Prime, will just go, we're just not going to have a backline. We're just going to accept and play hyper-aggressive. Winston jumps in. You follow through with your Kiriko. The rush goes aggressive, and then once you've traded the backline away from Ataraxia, they don't have the healing, sustainability, stay on the point. And that's a great play by Peace and Love to close out Paraiso. Yeah, I mean, that's the benefit of having the Kiriko as well. Like, okay, we I, well, you could just TP out. I could just TP to uh, our front line. And then they, they did exactly that. They hit the rush. And I thought our Primer Age is pretty over, right? Because MCD is kind of caught. The Brig was like in between MCD and the Primer Raging Winston, which means you're still getting Inspire Healing and packs, but still end up getting focused down. And with the Brig falling too, I mean, MCD is, is as good as gone. And it was a slow but sure, like, uh, slow bleed out. And as soon as you lose your Winston, you've got so much less to kind of hold on to the payload with as well. Let's have a listen to the winning comms, though, in the very final few moments of that round for Peace and Love. I kill him, I kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Not a bit of shot calling there, it felt like a little bit of like target focus. Obviously, we heard a, a listen to Peace and Love's attacks uh, when they were attacking initially, and they were like, oh, okay, who do we who do we go for? Who do we focus? Like, we got to call a target, and uh, yeah, it seems like they uh, shot that up. And it's one of those things that, uh, you know, everyone, they, you, you can hear it in the comms, especially in that first one that you heard, where they were like, it's that disappointing moment where you kind of know you've lost the fight when everything starts to right. evolve. And that's why they're getting very loud at that final moment, because they know and recognize these are the things that need to be cleared up. We need to know what we're doing and getting on the same page. And that's why Overwatch communication is hectic, because Overwatch is a hectic game. So yeah. it's it's cool to be able to see these players and these teams sort of really coordinating in the heat of the moment at a, at a, at a high level. Yeah, it's really nice. Really cool to see. I, I do love listening. So it's always, uh, it's always interesting to see how, or like, who's speaking and the different style of comms as well. That sleep is so nice from MCD. You're that walking the animation, um, obviously with the duplication. So yeah, MCD showing the veteran status there on the Ana. Definitely his best hero too, the Ana. So I'm pretty sure he's very happy at uh, running that pick. Feels like most flex supports, like their best hero is Ana. Like you know what I mean. A lot of old school flex supports, at least. It's just a fun hero to play, you know, like I think yeah, Ana nice. overall just it kind of does it all But you actually saw the limitations of the Ana Brig on this map at like full display The Lucio Kiriko works for a great time. This is the MC oh my aggressive God. play <laughs> I mean, come on man, I, mean, I, I understood what they were trying to do and you kind of outlined it perfectly It was like, okay, so if we go super fast here, we can kill the Ana and we can force them into a position where we can maybe get them in last fight and that's just sad. That is <laughs> Sal Barrier Suzu. Yeah, nothing you can do against that, even if you're high nooning. But um, you yeah, get traded back there. So it actually, uh, right. I like the idea of Ryan Beak, but the fact that a Beak ended up dying for that play ended up costing them in, in, in a pretty big way. So look at the map stats, pretty similar for the most part. The only real big difference was in the mitigation, which is surprising because both teams are playing Winston. So just more value coming out of the Ataraxia bubbles. Yeah, and I suppose... Well, or maybe the Brig? I, a, I was thinking the Brig, right? Yeah, that yeah. would make most sense to me, the Brig being a lot of mitigation there. But yeah, regardless, peace and love. End up taking the map number two. Anoraxia, though. They chose uh, Esperanza here. So we're going into our third map. And I'm hearing now we're seeing a roster swap coming through for Ataraxia. So dollar in, MCD out. So this is guaranteed like we're playing Lucio here. Yeah, that, ha that has to mean they're playing Lucio. It, what that means for the flex support, that, that raised some question. Maybe this is, you know, they, they want to play the Kiriko um and dollars more comfortable what well, we'll have to see uh exactly what they're going to do with this one i think we, we will see just like faster compositions both teams seem to like playing the dive and i think esperanza overall is very conducive to being able to play that dive so excited to see how this is going to go but interestingly enough uh this match so far is following the swiss stage match that they had as well ataraxi won the first map when they played it then um, peace and love won the second map ended up winning the third map and closing out the series so let's see if we see similarities continue to go or if teams are going to start evolving and moving on maybe this substitution by ataraxia is them accepting that hey maybe something needs to change 
Yeah, it would it would make sense though to have MCD in on the second map if you're going to play the Arna. And then for yeah. the maps proceeding, I can't imagine we're going to see MCD again, just because we're going on to Flashpoint next. So worth keeping in mind. Guaranteed to get a Flashpoint map, of course. Both teams being on one and one now. Roll out the gates. No real surprises. Only a small change hit. Phalaraxia going with a BAP. No Kiri. And the Cassidy, no Sojin. It's interesting seeing how EU likes to play. They do like playing this sort of brawlier style in Esperanza, very different to what you see, you know, in the Korean region, for example. They like to play these maps very fast. While I feel like almost in, you know, and the West as well in North America, I think people like to play slow, play very linear, and just sort of play around your own cooldowns and try and win that even matchup. Yeah, the bat versus carry is interesting too. I, uh, I do really like playing back right now personally, but the carry just offers a lot, especially against these tracers. We saw we saw Slay yesterday specifically, yeah. just kind of dominate tracers, just denying every pulse bomb imaginable. So with the Baptiste, you do get the immortality field, which is good, but the Suzu just seems so much better because you're not taking any damage when you're. Uh, I, would, I would also say the Baptiste provides more consistent damage, right? You can shoot their right. a lot more, you can pump out a lot of things, the window can be useful, but the one weakness that I think you get from the Baptiste is Baptiste is just a lot more exploitable. If, if the Baptiste ends up out of position, that's a quick Shit. beat coming out for Dollar, actually. They're going to go in with it as well. Doesn't matter. Like Peace and Love were ready for how quickly that sound barrier is. You is only at 67% ult charge, so maybe just a lot of great healing and boost to really boost that numbers, a bit of damage as well, and that's going to give him the first fight. Jeez. That, very rare do you see a beat being used first in the in the first fights. <laughs> I was ridiculous. That must have been like three amp amp it up healings back yeah. to back or something. That's absurdly quick. And that's a, that's a that's a style that a lot of players are starting to just realize. Maybe hey, this is better instead of playing an aggressive Lucio and playing a Yo, heal bot again. Yeah, you just play the heal bot. You get really fast uh, sound barriers. You know, popularized by Violet in the Korean region, but very low from trying to go through that window. Yeah, that is a rough one for a beak. I know Suzu there was trying to save the team. Psycho just having to back up to the uh, mini now as uh, his main healer is down. I mean, there's not much really peace, peace and love can do at this point. They're going to have to reset. And they use their own rush too. They've got a sound barrier into this next fight, but Ataraxia are in such a good spot now. With Gala, with Gala and Fi, their ability to go back to the high ground and just have one person touch the point. Uh, they might be able to get a free checkpoint there, but they are playing up though. Yeah, they, they, they want to force cooldowns, make it difficult for them to step up. But we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. Dollar almost has another sound barrier. About to lap Eula in sound barriers. It's just absolutely doing so much damage and healing. I mean, they're going to be able to get it now, especially with these uh, overclocks. Hitting some mean body shots. No insta-kills just yet. Does stop Adaraxia from getting that checkpoint, though, Scott. Worth keeping in mind. A bit pretty much right on it. It's probably, like, what, less than a meter to go. The whole goes for the second one before we see Eula. Eula Eula's like, what? <laughs> How has he got another beat, bro? He's like, this guy cheating for sure. Shaq's in the back line. Just peppering down ice on the Orissa. He's going to have to come up big here, especially with a fight down. It's all on Shaq's now. The solo DPS for Ataraxia in this engagement. But with Eula dead and a beak also just stranded, just isolated alone. This is not close so far, Scott. Peace and love are just getting torn to shreds. It feels like peace and love are just completely out of the tempo right now. It feels like Adaraxia are being able to do exactly what they want. They're playing fast around their situation. They're playing around the Bapity, uh, the Bap and the Cassie. The Bapity. <laughs> the Bapity. That's the, the Bapity. Bapity. <laughs> That's a legendary the thing. The high ground through the window right now is doing a lot of damage, forces them off, and that will give the checkpoint as well. Adaraxia is just playing this perfectly. They really have a great understanding of how they want to play this composition. And Dolo has a great understanding of hitting the E key, bro. That guy is yeah, crazy. Look at his ult charge. 50% ult charge already. Rush on the high ground. Uh, Adaraxia says, uh, I'm good. I'm actually good, Chief. We're going to just back off. Just round that corner. So that rush got almost zero value. 62 meters and counting now. And like you said, flipping at that map. Rough spot for Peace and Love to be in. They got Terra Surge if they want to make some space with it or trying to catch out five. But oh, Psycho. Psycho pops his head around the corner looking for a pulse. Instantly get met with a bullet to the brain. And Shaxx holds on to that pulse bomb as well. And now oh, nice. Nice. he wants to try and get in there. The pulse bomb on top of the Orissa and goodbye. Fi and Carla doing it falling over, but Anorexia is still in good stead. They do have that checkpoint. Just dying on the point is the, the priority now. 
Shaxx with the pole swamp go. Pretty nice, but it's going to get cleaned up in the end. Peace and Love still very much on the back foot here, Scott. With Adaraxia, I ship most of them will get front sp forward spawn here. Yeah, all of them. So they're yeah. very much willing to fight on this high ground again. That's one of the huge advantages of getting this checkpoint early is just you can take more fights and you can just keep playing aggressive. So Peace and Love probably aren't even going to get that much meterage even from winning that team fight. So yeah, they're going to start falling back and Dolan with another sound barrier. But the person I'm keeping my eye on and Lauren was the person who opened it up in the last fight, getting the pick on a gala. I need to see more from these overclocks. The overclocks just haven't been offering enough so far. Oh, yeah, Dollar just doing a little look down, 360 spin there. There's another beat, Eula's like, how? <laughs> One man Dara Surge. Oh, takes a beat pretty low. There's the spear, easy kill. Eric Hague, yeah, was the one-man Derizer onto to the Soja Beaks. Like, I've got you, Chief. Oh, boom, comes in, <laughs> Suzu's, and then dies himself. <laughs> That's uh, then very unlucky. Away. Your sacrifice <laughs> is appreciated. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but we lost the team fight. Oh, okay. My bad, guys. 64 meters now and counting for Adaraxia. They're going to be able to swing around this corner with a window and a high noon. Peace and Love are going to have a tough time getting through this. Yeah, the Bapini ultimates are going to be really strong. They're going to be using crazy. The window, using the high noon. It's just going to be so much damage coming out. It's going to... Aixlom's going to have to be careful. Eula does have the sound barrier, but using a sound barrier against a window or a high noon just feels so terrible because it doesn't feel like it does anything for you. They can just disengage and then you accomplish nothing. Ooh. Oh, Lauren down. The Magne. Good pulse, even better lamp and fight, even gets the kill onto Psycho. Had a pulse one coming out from Shax, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Atraxia just running away with this one. Peace and Love got zero answers to what Atraxia are bringing right now. I mean, I think it's just Fi. I mean, Dollar as well. Uh, also, 50% towards another sound barrier. And Lauren gets uh, rolled. Uh, nice little speed boost. And their understanding of the comp and the tempo as well is just is second to none. This is just an absolute steamroll. And this is a composition that is being popularized by SSG. SSG love playing this way, uh, playing around the Baptiste, playing around the Cassidy, because it does give you the opportunity to make these kind of flanks, make these kind of plays with your Bap and your Cassidy just moving around. Right now, Peace and Love have no answer. Engaging with a rush, but another great disengage by Anoraxia. Ice has to be very careful about overextending here. They've got Terra Search. Oh, yes. Sees the window. Gets out of there ASAP. All right, that's one all down, but Dollar is again going to lap on this sound barrier, by the way. He's 10% away. Eula has the beat, hasn't used it in the last couple of fights. He's got, he's got a beat. He's got a beat. He's got another beat. He's going to use it instantly. That's kind of been his uh, prerogative when he gets these ultimates. Just use it, charge up another one. Surely they know Peace and Love have got a sound barrier as well. Or maybe Dollar's in, a, in his own there head. It is. He's waiting for it too. There's the sound barrier. Here after the terror surge ended up landing. So a lot of that damage just being absorbed by that overhealth. Good stick from Shax too. I mean, peace and love just getting absolutely trounced. Yeah, it's not close. They, 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 they really don't know what to do in this situation. They're trying to play fast. Like they're recognizing like, hey, we're just taking too much damage. We're giving them too many opportunities to get value out of their ultimates. But every time they try and engage and they play aggressively, Adorax is just ready for it, disengages. And then peace and love just feel like they're throwing ultimates to the wind. And a little bit more time. They have the forward spawns. Shax is pushing, but Adaraxia, they don't want to go aggressive. They understand the advantages that they have. They're going to leave the Bat, the Cassidy, sitting on the high ground and say, peace and love. Good luck trying to fight into us again. I don't want to say this map is solved, Scott, but like this is all you're going to see in like pro play, right? It's just, if we get around that corner, we're happy just resetting, fight high ground. We don't have to fight on the bot ever, basically. And then they just flip the script. They flip the map completely. They just yeah. disengage. And, and then Dola the gets a random kill onto Lauren, who was trying to peek over the top with a with the overclock, Scott. I mean, okay. Peace and love. It's like playing tug of war with a fifth grader right now. Uh, Gala does end up going down, however. So they lost the majority of their heals. Pulse bomb in the hands of Psycho. Shouldn't need to use it though, but still almost a hundred meters for Ataraxia uh, with a minute to go. Peace and love have the highest mountain to climb. Like you're talking Sisyphus times like four, right? It's almost a vertical cliff because right now Ataraxia, their ability to reset and have the forward spawns permanently. It's peace and love having to win what two or three fights, maybe four or five to even get to the checkpoint. Yeah, and they're only just now getting rid of the four that spawn, but Adaraxia, they have four spawned. ultimates they getting have up to five ultimates coming soon. 38 seconds remaining. If they're smart, they're just going to sit on this high ground, try and find a pick, and then just drop five ultimates on Peace and Love, and there's not much they're going to be able to do it. They're going to go aggressive with the Kitsune Rush, but into a high noon, that's dangerous. Yeah, oh, you step into my domain? 
With your rush? Absolutely not. Are they going to even be able to use it? No, Adaraxia just disengaged from that ult completely and then used the window to stop and punish the over-aggressors from Peace and Love. I mean, Eric Egg also has a Terra Surge of his own, but it's actually Ice that ends up going down. Window damage too much for them to deal with. Seven seconds to go. There's the Terra Surge. A beak ends up falling. There's the spear. There's the kill. Lauren oh, down. Is he going to do it? Just had another yeah, one in there. Number five. 100 meters. Adaraxia end up taking Esperanto with ease. Match point as well for them. Man, you're feeling so good right now if you're an Adaraxia fan. But peace and love, where you at? That was just not close. That was not reminiscent of the last two maps we just saw. Yeah, not at all. And maybe that's an idea of like, they, Adaraxia has a really good idea of how they want to play with the, the Baptiste Cassidy when they're playing that Arista setup. And the maps just haven't been conducive for how they want to play the game. So now we go over to Esperanza. They're able to put Dollar in, get a billion sound barriers, and then play around that as well. That's difficult, especially considering Suravasa is the next map, right? This is another map where you can play that Bap uh, Arissa, and it's going to be difficult. So if you're peace and love, you need to go to the drawing board in like five seconds and solve the problems and understand what's working. And I think one of the fundamental issues they had consistently throughout Sur uh, sorry, Esperanza was their rushes and their overclocks getting no value. Every time they pull the trigger on those ultimates, there's a disengage. They need to find a way to force the positioning of um, Anoraxia, otherwise they're never going to get an opportunity to win these fights. Yeah, I can't really remember if I saw Lauren in the kill feed once, it, not even with overclock, right? They were just unable to get much stuff done uh, at all. And when I say in the kill feed, I mean not dying. I mean getting kills, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was just really rough. I mean, Adoraxia, yeah, they maybe need to go back to the drawing board, but Dollar's ability to charge these beats is kind of nuts. Like, this is the first beat of the fight uh, that we just saw in that previous clip. Like, that was so fast. They call him the Sound Barrier Specialist. Like, audio engineer looking uh, looking dude. It's crazy as well because you know I don't feel I don't feel it was you also getting kind of outplayed with like oh sound barriers and stuff it's just the pace that uh, peace and love were playing at was just nothing like Adaraxia at all it was just way slower so he didn't even really get a chance to use the beats and it was all on um, the pace Adaraxia were kind of setting uh, it was just an out tempo match I feel in this uh, in this map and it, it it's a macro style, right? The, the way that right. they're playing around the Lucio healing, right? The, you can do this when you're playing the Baptiste and the Cassidy because everyone's sort of playing in a much more clump unit. You're not doing as many flanks as you are with the Lucio, Kiriko, Sojin, right? Where you're sort of trying to hold these off angles. You're trying to get flank pressure. They're just playing as a big clump and they're just willing to just take that fight very slowly. And then when they oh, yeah. get those advantages to be able to go in, they go in and yeah. An eight difference in the KD under one KD for uh, Peace and Love. That really highlights how it's one that map was. I mean, look at the healing done. I think I don't think stats normally paint the entire picture and overwatch it. They never normally do. But like the healing difference there is kind of nuts. Like yeah. a, a whole 10K more, like that's ridiculous. And that's a lot of that is like amp healing too. I would, I would love to see the actual uh, player stats. I'm sure we could get them at some point or even just like from the player pov. Um, but yeah, anyway, next map, Suravasa. It was, was Peace and Love's choice, but they, obviously there's not many choices with a Flashpoint as of yet. And both of maps play somewhat similar. Suravasa, like you mentioned, Scott, probably going to see Adaraxia stick with Dollar in for the Lucio, since Suravasa being a Flashpoint map, you need the speed. Um, we'll see how if they end up going for the Baptiste as well, because having the, the Bapity and the Lucio just kind of stacked on top of each other and then just uh, play these points is pretty... Pretty ridiculous, especially on Suravasa, where you can just hold these very far back. Um, you can like hold up. There's a lot of like high grounds, a lot of uh, positions where you can just hold super far back. You're not like perma fighting on the point on this map like you do on Junkertown. So we'll have to end up uh, see what goes down. Obviously, Peace and Love want to be able to get back into this one. They need to send us to a map number Shucks. five, but it's Ataraxia, it's their game to lose right now. And yeah, this is a bit of an interesting one. Danit in, Shax out, Shax. Perma playing Tracer. Tracer is his best hero, but Darnit comes in. Okay. Yeah, I have a lot of questions about this substitution because Shax was going nuclear on some of these points, just hitting huge pulse bombs, really diffing on that roll. So I wonder if there's something spicy to be added here with Darnit coming in, maybe a, a pocket pick. 
I, I, I'm curious because that went so well. I don't know if I would make that decision, but sometimes these players have already been predetermined of who's going to play on what maps in the series. This is what you scrim on. This is what you practice. So see what Adaraxia have up their sleeve by putting Darnet in. But on the other side for peace and love, I almost wonder if you go like, hey, we're not going to be able to solve this solution by playing the Arisa matchup. We don't want to mirror. What if they play a little bit faster? I don't understand what their limitations are as a team in terms of like, can they play an effective dive on a map like Suravasi? If not, can they play just something different? Throw a curveball at Ataraxia because if they just keep playing Ataraxia's game, you're going to get the same result. All right, let's load in. Ataraxia on map point now. And uh, it's worth keeping in mind too, they did face each other in Swiss stage. And it was Peace and Love that came out on top. A two to one victory there. And this being a first to three. God damn. That is. That is a cool looking crocodile. That was awesome. Do you see it the uh, Korean contenders? Out, you know? Korean contenders clip. Uh, not contenders, sorry. Korean uh, OWCS clip of uh, them laughing about the crocodile POV. No. <laughs> it, was, it was really good. I love the uh, Korean broadcast, actually. It's so funny. Yeah, that's funny. All right, let's have a look, though. Looks like. Peace and love, no real shocks here, just going with the Kiri, going with the Lucio, but there's no Tracer, they're actually opting for the Echo instead, and so they're playing a Darnit here instead of Shax, but this is the different flavor that we kind of expected would come out, and it's going to be the Sim. And this kind of is shades of what we got from Twisted Minds yesterday, right? They like playing around the Symmetra. They like being able to move their team as a whole in one direction. But because they're not playing the Malga, I, I, can't, I wonder if this sort of changes the way that they want to play it. Uh, let's see if Dana can find the value. Just like we talked about with Twisted Minds, the difficulty can be that you don't have a Tracer to be able to deal with the opposition Tracer. And Dana's going to fall early. And that should be first count to peace and love. And now, yeah, Adoraxia needs to get out of this fight. Yeah, they need to die or just reset. And there you go. They choose death. Or at least most of them do. Good first uh, good first pick on Dollar of all people too, which is uh, a little bit frustrating. Oh, darn it. Goes down super late. Wow, that's not good. Yeah, and if you're not going to use the Symmetra Teleporter as quickly as they did, I, maybe they were trying to prepare for it before Dollar fell, but uh, you're, you're not really going to find value. Maybe they're just trying to poke with the right clicks of Symmetra, but you you can't argue that that would be better than a Tracer in this situation. Actually, interestingly enough, Peace and Love don't, aren't even playing a Tracer there, and they're playing this, uh, the Echo, which is a pretty solid choice as well. Your ability to just pump out damage. If anyone gets low, you can beam them down. Well, they TP past the choke. I mean, they're... Oh, that's a lot of damage. The Symmetra also does a lot of work to the Orisa, but actually getting up to the Orisa face-to-face -face is pretty tough. Both rushes coming through from Abik and Gala. Actually, Ice ends up going down first here. And there we go. Okay, here's the turnaround. And this is where the Sim really shines. Yeah. You can put the Tyrus on the point, and then they have to walk into you, and you're in close range, so you can charge up to the Tier 3 beam. Then you're good to go. But 95% for peace and love, and a lot of ults. Yeah, maybe it is just one of those things that they're like, hey, we just want to play a spam comp, right? They're just like, we want to make it as difficult for them as possible to get through any choke that they try and walk through. They can stand on point. They can uh, they can just poke and prod. They also have the sim wall up right now. They have high noon. They have all the tools out of Axia to be able to stop Peace and Love from coming in. Let's see how Peace and Love are going to try and enter into this fight. It's pretty difficult as the Arisa to sort of get in those positions. Wall goes up. It's a split wall, though. Psycho does end up going down to a turret, of all things, and here comes the high noon. So like a frontwards-facing wall, like we've seen a lot of Twisted mind, Minds walls peak. But it doesn't really matter, it seems, because they do end up winning that fight. Psycho going down to a random turret there was, I imagine, quite frustrating for Peace and Love, considering that copy can be such a valuable tool at taking the point. And Adaraxia, they're playing super far up, looking for picks, looking for anybody. They know Psycho is spawned first, so that's probably going to be the person to touch if they do even choose to. They're looking for it, but I think it'd be ill-advised to try and get in here. Yeah, there you go. Point cat. Alrighty. Okay, now a rotation swiftly with the teleporters. Salaraxia, they did end up losing the point first. Managed to get almost a full 99 to 0 flip. Pretty nice. And you can see how Darned wants to play with the Symmetra turrets. What they're doing is they're stacking all three in some random corner, and that's what ended up killing Psycho in the last fight. Psycho runs around the corner, doesn't realize there's three turrets, and that just does so much damage, and that can be difficult to deal with on the fly. So Peace and Love need to be careful and understand where these turrets are. Oh, Darned's been seen. What? Okay. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> oh, see you later. Little TP away. Psycho getting kind of dueled out. Oh, can he get a fight? The little diff? 
Okay, there is the high noon, and there is the deletion of the copy. That's all good, though. It's distraction technique, space created. Yeah, three people you distracted there. Enabled your team to win that frontwards duel, and that is the first cap on this point. Goes to peace and love again. Yeah, and that was just great play by Psycho. Psycho getting the duplicate on the Cassie, able to live a surprisingly long amount of time. Just going to slow things down. Now nah, Araxia backs against the wall once again. They're going to have to be the team to re-engage. You can see an aggressive stance for here from Peace and Love. Maybe trying to go for an aggressive Kitsune rush. Nice TP rush on to the point as well. Carl is the first to fall though. Same with Fire in quick succession. That TP play looks nice, but when a piece of love, uh, I wouldn't say they were ready for it there. It was a little bit of a shock, but they all managed to group up extremely quickly, back off as a unit, and then use a rush of their own. Pick off onto Gala is perfect. That'll be Adaraxia going for a reset again. Actually switching over to the, the Batiste now. I like this decision. I feel like with the way that they're playing, the Baptiste can make more sense. You, know, you can do a lot of AOE healing. You're essentially planning on clumping anyway. Grouping up, they're gonna try and bust out of this small room. TP2 touched. Did they manage to get it? Yeah, they did. Sound barrier comes in. Terra Searcher group everybody together. A little flip of the map here as the wall comes in for Adaraxia. Peace and love just getting off of the point almost immediately there, but they didn't lose anybody, so a quick re engagement is available. A TP onto the high ground now. Psycho takes a lot of damage, almost ends up going down, but he needs to flip once more. Gala goes down to the railgun as the sound barrier comes through. No way Adaraxia can fight into this one, but they're gonna choose to, to try and hold on to this point. But still, Lawrence just holding on to that final charge, that overclock. Just nails Eric, and then at the end of the day, Anoraxia, they made these swift TP plays and with the wall, but that's so many ultimates to use, and then Lauren just matches him with the railgun. A fantastic re-engage there by Peace and Love, just, uh, it was a, f a flip into a flip into a flip into a flip, just everybody rotating as a unit over and over again. It was Peace and Love that came out on top as they now rotate to this third point. Most importantly for me, the thing that is important for Peace and Love is Lauren's hitting shots, right? Like that was the one thing we called out in Esperanza. Lauren just wasn't able to find value, just getting punished every time they pick their head. It's two fights in a row now that they've gotten the opening pick with a rail. So if Lauren can keep that up, that's gonna be something that Atro Ataraxia don't really have tools to be able to deal with. They don't have a trace to be able to put on pressure. So now they just they just have to deal with it and hope that Lauren starts missing shots. High noon TP engage. Oh, that was close. Lauren again. Eyes on the side too, that's a good window. I really like the windows coming out from Adaraxia. And a lot of good ones in the last map. There's their copy, Terra Surge. Psycho has to get out of there. His copy's not finding a crazy amount of value in terms of kills, but creating a lot of space, and that is for certain. Especially if you copy the Orisa. Normally the, co the copies, the best targets, are things that have a lot of survivability tools. Especially if you're copying tanks, and Orisa is definitely one of them. Abik uses the rush at the end there, and Adaraxia is just like, okay, you can have the point to begin with, but just re-engage in the same position. Peace and Love kind of getting caught with their pants down, They're trying to rotate onto the high ground, but they've given up so much position on the point. Oh, what a terror surge. Ends up getting uh, deleted, though. That was a big one. Ended up uh, hitting that 4 to 5 before they went in with the terror surge. Helped uh, get into position with that speed boost, but... Problem is with terror surging five people, they all kind of just look at you and you die. Oh, that was close. Oh, very close to dying. Yeah, Peace and Love, I don't think realizing, I think they thought Adaraxia was going to be rotating around the right side, but ended up getting caught. Had to use Ultimus to try and offset that uh, positional weakness. Not losing it now. Another wall coming up soon. Window for Gala. Peace and Love onto the point. Lauren with the overclock. I've been seeing their praises on this map. Let's see if we can do it again. Well, how about you deal with one of these, huh? A little spear spin and then a golden Orisa for you. It, what, what can you, like, the, the problem with that overclock is what can you expect? Are you just hoping people are going to peek you and dis disrespect you when you pop that yes. overclock? It doesn't feel like Peace and Love are playing around and putting Lauren in a position to f succeed with these overclocks. And now more and more percentage goes up for Adaraxia. 79%, 80%, one last team fight. We know the high ground too. And look at this. Fire using that TP. Oh, he meets Psycho. Doesn't die to the nade though. Luckily, there is the TP back on to the opposite high ground. Dude, I love this so much. Fire's so using that TP. Oh, and they don't even touch either. Oh, Anoraxia capped the point. Fire is, he's just, he's like he's playing Portal 3, bro. Like, he's just TP all over the place. So you can't even track the guy. All right, Anoraxia now on map point, match point. One more, and they will take the series away from peace and love. And that feels so bad if you're peace and love. They use the sound barrier and the duplicate to get into the fight to touch in overtime. 
but no one was able to get onto the point, so those ultimates just go by the wayside. Oh, Fry's getting very aggressive. It's no issue, but they do have to use the lamp, so that might result in slowing down for Adaraxia. Nope, they're just going more aggressive. There's the cap. Once again, peace and love. This is the third time in a row they've capped first. Or fourth time in a row, I think. They've capped first. And they're actually are more than happy to fight on the back foot, it seems. Oh, there's the Orisa in the uh, in the rush. Pretty scary prospect. No way Adaraxia want to fight this, so they end up backing off pretty quickly. Yeah, great play with the rush. Like, uh, their rushes have gotten uh, swing value so far in this series. Uh, sometimes... Oh, okay. Oh, I mean... Eric Hek decides to okay. use Terra Surge in spawn. That would have been sick. 5k, put it on front page of Reddit. Wow. Like, that would have been... would you get a 5k? What, when would that ever If everybody happen? used mouses and keyboards disconnect at the same time. I almost thought Eric Hek was going to do the classic, like, oops, I accidentally used my ultimate in a bad spot. It's okay, I was swapping heroes anyway. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, switch to a different hero for no reason. Well, they did. of it, just accept uh, the bad ultimate. Hey, really? you know, I can't speak. You know, but we've all had our bad ultimates in the past. So true, you yeah, had two of them. So true. Okay, well, it didn't have to bring that up. <laughs> As we go into this next one, overclock beat windows. Oh, okay. They use it a lot at the same time, but it stops uh, Lauren from getting a nice angle. 99% for peace and love. This point has been really drawn out of Adaraxia. They do find the flip there, but that's just peace and love just deciding they can go again as five. Same kind of thing has happened in the last couple of uh, couple of points here. Damn it, so close to the wall. Peace and love have got so many ultimates. Surely, surely they didn't lose this one. There's the sand bar. Peace and love just dealing with this teleporter easily. Perfectly designed sound barrier indeed. And Dollar just isolated, just taken down eventually. And yeah, Peace and Love just ult dumping in that fight. Not quite though, I'd say. Actually, I'll take that back. Psycho Ace saving that duplication for this next point. And here we go. Final round of this flashpoint. And Araxia still need that one to not eliminate Peace and Love. This is the uh, winner's match, of course. The winner here will advance on to the main event. Peace and Love want to make sure they can go to a map number five. So they got to win this next point. Yeah. Now, Peace and Love, they have good ultimates here as well. They're going to get to the point. Once again, they have the rush. They catch out Araxia off guard with this rush, yeah. They're going to try and get the pick onto Eric Hek. Wall goes down to give him a little bit of protection. Only a little bit, though. It's kind of split fairly awkwardly. You can see them all, like, grouped up in this corner. Damn it, didn't stand a chance. Ooh. I said well, high noon, but a uh, little bit of a spear there from Psycho. The duplication on the Orisa. Once again, Peace and Love. Very easy... Uh, first fights on these points they always cap the point first it's whether they can hold it on to them is the question peace and love they do end up duping there so yeah again not all dumping in that last fight or at least not fully just enable them to capture that point first feels like peace and love is doing a much better job of catching out araxia oh wow that was a great disengage by gala the fact that they were able to live <laughs> the five players running them down but Peace and Love are doing a much better job of forcing Adaraxia to fight on their terms. They're using the rushes at the right times. The overclocks are a little bit better. And that's why their ult cycling just feels a lot easier. And it just doesn't feel like they're just getting completely dismantled with the teleporters and the movement from Adaraxia. So Terra Surge up for uh, Eric Hek. They have a window. They're actually going to flank all the way around to Peace and Love's side. Drop the window. Maybe try and catch them with some positioning stuff. Oh, no. That was uh, Ice for the moment there. Playing Doorkeeper playing the bouncer on the point, but they paid their fee. They get entrance now. Anoraxia do end up capping. 76% still still in one fight territory-ish, right, for peace and love. But it only cost them a window, so that was a great play by Anoraxia. I feel like peace and love just weren't ready for that, that long, long flank. Just a little bit too much damage going through that window. But no issues, peace and love. They only really need to win one more team fight, and they have the ultimates to do it. So far, every time they've used rushes in this map, it feels like they've been finding value. So if they can do that again, they should be able to close this map and take some map five very early Terraso. Oh, they needed Suzu, and they got it just in time. I hear the high noon going out, but I'm afraid Fi didn't find any targets. What an absolute roll on this fight. Peace and love are going to be able to cap the point. And now if they find any staggers here, Adaraxia not going to have a chance to get back in here. And you can oh, see... No. Oh, dollar! It's going to go down. It's surely Peace and Love just taking this map, Scott, and going to a map number five. Yes, it is. Look at this. Duplication in the spawn. There's the point. There's the map. Map number five here for Peace and Love now. Pete, 
Peace and love, getting their mojo back, finding a little bit more form. We didn't see that on Esperanza. And then you have to question on the side of Ataraxia, were they finding enough value on the Symmetra to justify it? You can see the idea behind it on some of those points, the way that they're doing the TP plays, allowing their team to move around. But it just didn't feel like as soon as Peace and Love just wisened up to what they were doing and then just sort of forced their point, it wasn't really like they could do anything with Symmetra. Symmetra just isn't very good in the neutral if you're not getting value out of the teleporter and the kit of her. Yeah. Rialto up next. That's got to be Shax coming back in, right? I mean, you can play the Sim, to be fair. Thinking about it, especially on, like, point one, you can, like, TP past these sort of these problematic chokes. Point two, especially, you can just TP up to high ground, ignore yeah. the bridge completely. Like, there's a lot of places you can play the Sim, but do you think Shax is coming back in here for, uh, for the team? I would expect Shax to come back in. I think Tracer is really strong. There's just so many great flank angles, especially on the first point, right? You can play towards the uh, sort of the rivers and stuff like that. You can just always putting on pressure, but we do have some winning comms coming out from Peace and Love. Let's hear what we have to see. Chase, 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 chase,
Um, I mean, Ike Vodo was kind of close between um, Peace and Love and uh, Ah Yeah, but the Esperanza that they played was not like Ah Yeah got like three meters and uh, Peace and Love 142. So, yeah, not the closest there. Definitely the head honcho ponchos for this group. And with Ataraxia on the defense, looks like they're going to be running Fi on the Widow. I, I, I'm kind of curious to see how the Widowmaker is going to work here because all of a sudden you lose some of that damage. They're going to want to play that Winston. Obviously, you have the long sidelines, but peace and love. Yeah, Wait, they're going to see are, this. Hang on. There are flags outside of Rialta as spawn. I play on... They're not there on low settings. No, I, I think it's what... That's a that's a settings difference where if you play on lower settings, that there's a bunch of uh, assets and resources that just... I just don't work. see... Like, the art in Overwatch is really beautiful and very stylized, right? There's a lot of art I just don't see because I play on low. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, I've played on low... Frames. Yeah, you do it for the... Fr exactly. I want a consistent 240 frames, bro. Or 250 frames. So... It's going to be interesting. So Peace and Love, they're going to continue to play the Orisa, but they have Psycho over to the Tracer so that they can put a little bit of pressure on the Widowmaker. There's going to be, there's going to need to be big things coming out of Fire. They, they, Fire needs to find value, needs to find headshots, because otherwise you can see exactly what's going to happen here. Adaraxi is just consistently being pushed back. The Brawl style of the Orisa and the Kiriko just running at their team. If they don't have that extra damage from the Cassidy, there's just nothing they're going to be able to do. Eric uh -oh. falls, Tama <laughs> falls, and that's a first point capture straight to Peace and Love. Well, they gave no remorse to Fi. That was rather rough for the Widowmaker there. You normally expect a little bit of a slower style, a little slower push with the Orisa, but they know Fi's on Widow, so they just wrap through the buildings and giving him no room to find a headshot. Really nice stuff so far from Peace and Love. And Fi, yes, yeah, okay. There's the switch. No Widow, straight to the Cass. Yeah, and I... Now, oh, actually, Fi's going to go go over to Echo, uh, indecisive of what they want to do on this map. It feels like Ataraxia were not ready for what Peace and Love were bringing out. And th this is a weird matchup, playing the Winston versus the Orisa. The Winston can definitely work, but it requires a lot of coordination and a lot of structure. It's a lot easier for Peace and Love to win this matchup because they just need to play as a unit and deal with the threats that are going to be running at them, which is the Winston, which is the Echo. Oh, Fi's getting very low. Jeez, yeah, no, Fire's good. 61 HP. It's gonna, that passive is gonna kick in in just a moment. But Shax is already dead. Wow, that's Araxia. Not, uh, not standing up to peace and love right now. Maybe this Primal Rage is the difference maker, but they've got the beat. They've got the rush. They've got every tool they pretty much need. Laser Sound Barrier for Dollar. But Eric Kick is still super low. And Lauren is more than happy to just kind of dash on forward, knowing the Winston can't put down a bubble to dissuade them from using that overclock. I mean, Peace and Love are just running away with this. Four minutes on to second. Uh, like, who has died yet? Like, maybe one death on the side of uh, Peace and Love? Ataraxia just getting steamrolled. I have very rarely seen five minutes and 30 seconds remaining going into the third point of Rialto of all maps. Like, this is just an absolute stomp right now from Peace and Love. And Adaraxi is going to accept that. They're going to move over to the Arisa themselves. Fire's going to stem the bleeding a little bit, taking down Psycho. That should at least create a little bit of a reset. But oh, I, I, I like this look from Adaraxi. I want to see them go back towards what they were doing more on Esperanza. They know they can win this Arisa matchup. They did on Esperanza. Just getting a little too cute with it. Ooh, nice Suzu there, saving Fire's life. Hit a couple of headies there, but not guarantee them any kills just yet. This is really rough out of Axe here. I mean, Peace of Love are just kind of working them like clay on a potter's wheel, bro. Like, they are just running around them, and they are forcing Ataraxia's positioning the whole time. Yeah, and they're, get, they're getting car progress while this is happening. Ataraxia falls back. Fire does end up getting the high noon, but... The rush comes out in response. A rush. Surely there's one kill. Oh no. And Lauren just takes the sky. He's almost got that overclock. Eric Egg I mean, got die. Eric Egg That's got so bad. demolished. I mean, what more could you really say? Terror Surge comes in. Garla with a nicely timed Suzu. But where's the swift step? Surely it's up in a second or so. Had to have been a couple of frames there where she could have pressed it, but unable to do so after that Terror Surge just smacked them down. Four minutes to go. And an overclock and a sound barrier. They're going to have to condemn with each other now. Later, Sound Barrier coming in from Peace and Love. Pulse Bomb for Shax. Looking for somebody. Looking for just a single kill. A single kill on the board will do. Lauren finds one, and eventually they manage to hold firm with the help of Gala's Rush. Peace and Love speed running through Rialto. That has got to be close. If they cap Scott, that's got to be a close to a record. But luckily, Ataraxia 
managed to hold them there. Three minutes and 30 seconds, though, on point three Rialto, where the payload was like five meters away. Yeesh. One fight to go for peace and love now to secure the point. Yeah, if you're peace and love, you don't need to stress here. You're, you're more than happy to take multiple fights. You can play a couple of dry fights, build up your ultimates. You can get Abik's uh, rush up before Gala gets another rush up as well. That'll be a window in time where you're just so much stronger than your opponent. See, just a lot of poking and prodding. Oh, uh, Eric, 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 is, again. Eric is just in no man's land. They weren't able to, like, escort them. They live. Yeah, I suppose so. Pulse bomb available for you just put a lot of work into, and pressure into uh, like trying to hold those angles, but then you eventually get pushed off, and now the rest of peace and love they're just cleaning up. Aircake's back. Sorry guys, I got the touch. Oh no, I don't. I lied. There's the boot. Two minutes and forty-one yeah, yeah. seconds for peace and love. Only losing a single fight in that whole attacker phase. Yeah, and that, that cost, it, it was when Adaraxia just had a bunch of ultimates advantage, so it wasn't even like they were playing dramatically better, and I, I want to see Adaraxia go back to what was working. I would like to see Gala come out in the Baptiste, Erekek starting the Orisa, and just sort of get a mental reset, because right now it feels like peace and love, they just have infinite confidence, and Adaraxia just don't have any answers. I want to see if Fire's going to pick up the Widow again. I hope not. I'll be honest, Jack. I, I really hope not. But I think Widowmaker, yes, there are situations where Widowmaker can be very strong on Rialto. You see a player that ranked a lot, right? But in a level of coordination where teams are very good about dealing with uh, flankers, working as a unit, not playing in sidelines, you can just be very difficult to find value. And as I said earlier, if you're not hitting the headshots, you're a, pretty much a completely useless member of the team. Yeah, Peace Love didn't give him chance to even do any of that because of the speed they were playing at. All right, peace and love on the defense. It's very, it feels like a very strange series. I don't know if you're feeling this way as well. Where like, some perhaps are like, okay, this is a steamroll. It's like uh, Esperanza, it was a steamroll. And then it's like, oh, okay, no, you take it back. It's actually super close. Oh, it's a steamroll. It was like some teams just very much preferring certain game modes, game types, game uh, maps as well. Peace and love, zero, zero scrims, fun, mixed team. Full fun team. Full fun team. Nah, All right, we're gonna no Widowmaker. What I was asking for, yeah. No Widowmaker. Fi on the Cassidy, Gala on the Baptiste. Go back to what was working. So yeah, let's see if they can uh, do what they did on Esperanza here on Rialto. They can just slowly take this high ground, play smart, play methodical. Fi signaling to the rest of their team that maybe they could just take the high ground away from Loren, but Loren does end up just skating away onto the high ground. Fi not did, not happy with that though, it seems. Loren oh, is getting, it's like, ball. you you guys did this to me, we do it to you. We're gonna hound your DPS down. Nice little wrap around there from Ataraxia. Has a, a magnetic grenade actually hit Psycho of all people? Not sure how Fi managed to weave that one through, but he did. There's a little bit of cat and mouse right now. Everyone's just chasing each other. No one's been able to find a pick. We've kind of reset and defaulted back to where we were. Both of us is going in. Good spare. Really Bye. good spare. Suzu on the tracer. They got hit with a hinder grenade again. Yeah, Fire gets taken out. They're just taking a lot of time off the bank as well, Scott. Worth keeping in mind. All these, like, big rotations. They're not getting a lot of space on the payload. And especially at this point, you need a fight win to really push this payload around the center square. And you can see Adorax is just trying to find anyone to isolate. They were looking for Lauren, they were looking for everyone. Oh, great boot. Forces Erekek onto the low ground. So the team's going to be a little bit disjointed. We're not under the point to give him a little bit of time, but huge beat, huge rush. Fi's dead again. Fi dead again. Man, they really hate Fi. <laughs> yeah, jeez. Yeah, that rush just uh, sealing the deal for peace and love there. They're going to get a little stag on to Gala too. Not the longest stagger, but still two minutes to go. Half the time bank disappearing. Uh, it, that did cost Peace and Love both support ultimates, so that's it's going to be difficult for them to really be able to stand up to the sound barrier coming out from Dollar. Just the sheer amount of damage. So if you're Peace and Love, you're looking for a disengagement here. You want to play aggressive. You want to force them to use ultimates and then try and back up and play to the more advantageous choke that you have. Oh, stick. Oh, fine. Lamp, a sound barrier, and then Terror Surge. Okay, they, they hate Fi. It's confirmed. My word. There was nothing they let him get away with there. And then the overclock 
to finish this one off. Oh, oh what why? a pulse bump, Shaxx. I mean, they killed. They killed I guess Ice. They're winning, actually. Yeah, with it, with that one more kill on the lower. Well, it's not even winning. That's sort of why I ask why. It's like even though you get that pick, it doesn't really result in much. Psycho needs to get out of this fight, though. As I said, that costs a tra outer axial all of their ultimates. Your peace and love, you take this. You just hold the choke. Use your advantageous position. Oh, he's dead again. That's so rough. Just hounding him down. Switched over from the Cassidy, mind you. Good little boop out of the land. Tries to scurry back to it, but Psycho hot on their trail. Escapes at 39 HP. 60 seconds to go now, Scott and Ataraxia in an awkward spot on this mega health pack. And just getting booped away by that spear spin. One more fight to go, realistically, for Ataraxia here. Peace and love. We're about to take the series away from them. Yeah, they're just a little bit of desperation from Ataraxia. They're just, you can see they're just playing a little panicked, a little too fast. They're not, they're not doing their due diligence and that's what results in Fire getting punished. And now you're fighting into a Kitsune rush from Abik. You got a Pulse Bomb from Psycho who's been so clean with them recently. This is going to be hard for them to win this fight. Psycho's already looking to set one up there, Scott. You can see him dueling with Shaq, trying to force that recall. Orin? Orin is pretty low. TP there from a beak. There is the rush. There's the pulse. Psycho lands it. However, the lamb's there to save them. Ataraxia, do you have the high ground? But Scott, high ground's great, but the payload's right there. Yeah, but seven seconds to go. Out this rush, almost a little too early from a beak. A beak getting a little panicked, thinking that you know they needed to fight that thing. Good window. Ice is in trouble. Yeah, they dropped straight onto the payload. Ignored that uh, rush completely. Dropped the window. Isolated ice, and that will be it. You'd imagine for this fight. Shaxx gets taken down by Psycho, but there's no one left from peace and love to touch that point. Well, I suppose Psycho is, but how long can he really survive? He ends up going down to a Magnate. And there we go. Finally, Ataraxia. But the skin of their teeth, man. They managed to get that first point. They just regained their composure. Oh, great play, recognizing, hey, that rush was terrible from a beak. We don't need to fight into this. We have 20 seconds remaining. Wait it out. Come back in with the window of their own. Peace and love just getting caught off guard. They still are in the driver's seat. They're in a great situation. Two minutes remaining for Ataraxia. And Peace and Love had two minutes 41 on the board, but anything can happen in these kind of push maps. I was gonna use the high dude. Ooh, almost wow. takes down Psycho, but Psycho is there. And a deal with the devil there. Two minutes to go, Scott, like you were saying. There's the terror so it's dragging everybody in. Sound barrier to match. Yudo was in there for quite a while. I was surprised the uh, overheld managed to tank all of that Arisa damage. Terror Surge, another one comes through, but Sound Barrier to match again. And here comes the Overclock. Lauren, perfect way to line people up. Everybody was scattering away from these Terror Surges. And Psycho, that's a nice little pulse bomb. A couple of ultimates will end this fight. Oh, the, yeah, there ain't no way that's happening. Surely they kill Gala, though. Psycho's alive. They don't even need to kill Gala. Like, if they can just reset the damage to be done at this point. Oh, like, I'll live. Oh, never mind. Gala's the one who wants blood. Oh, Psycho! Oh, straight to the right and not to the left to safety. And to forward. That's a, kind of a bad death, but you're Tracy. You're going to get be able to get back to the fight soon, but they rounded the second to last corner to second point. They have a rush here. I'd expect them to sort of waterfall it over, off of these stairs. There it is. Oh, in there the you go. Through the window. Ignore that one completely. Even just Suzu through it, hoping it would shatter it. Unfortunately, that's not how that interaction works. Fi just playing in the back line right there, knowing that maybe Peace and Love would overextend, and overextend they did through the window, and Fi had basically a firing range to shoot down. 30 seconds to go. Once again, Ataraxia playing near to OT as Peace and Love aren't going to be able to touch this point. Oh, Lauren's in, and Lauren is out. 0.15 meters to go, and they're determined to try and get a touch on this second point again. Just force OT, looking for a miracle hold now, but it's looking rather unlikely, especially as Shax has basically got free reign. And there we go, point two unlocked. Ataraxia, they are still in this. I don't like that recontest at the last second. I feel like you're giving away a lot of ultimates. You're giving up the first half of the third point. You guys have three minutes in the clock. There's no reason to feel like you're pressured or you're forced to recontest in these situations. You're better off taking the position because now they're going into this third point. They're at an ultimate disadvantage. All of a sudden, your team is all the way back, so you've lost that positioning. So it feels like, you know, peace and love, they're just so close to winning that it feels like they're sort of forcing things a little bit too much. No cancellation of the high noon there. This is in trouble. Okay, a very uh, stark contrast to what we saw on uh, point A. 60 seconds to go now for Ataraxia. 
very much in this, but the problem is now you can just kind of flood out the spawn with a lot of ultimates in your back pocket. Yeah, they, they should have the ultimates up. This will be a very even and balanced fight. It's going to come down to who uses the ultimates first. Gala drops the window early. Ice cannot take too much damage from this. Sandbarry oh. comes out. They're going aggressive. There's the Sandbarry. Terror Surge hits a lot of people. That Pulse Bomb doing no damage at all on the Fortifying Arissa. So all the poop and people back in. What a poop! Takes out on Gala, or at least helps Sue. That spear finishing him off. 30 seconds to go. 2.57 meters as well for Ataraxia to get that final checkpoint. And peace and love. They're trying to make it a little bit more punishing for Ataraxia to run away. I don't think you're going to secure a kill. No, you are not. Okay. Fan of Ars Cobb. Trying to play aggressive. 10 seconds to go. Overclock here. Tracer dead already. There's no one to touch, surely. Winston, Lucio, Moira. Reaper, everybody thrown in, but peace and love, they're going to shut the door on this series. A 3-2 victory in what was almost a shutout on Rialto. And peace and love, they refuse to go down. They refuse to get a... Uh, uh, revenge, I guess. Revenged? That's close enough to being a word. Is that a word? <laughs> I'm not sure. They refuse to go down to Ataraxia, who is just seeking that revenge. Man, peace and love turned it up to a sixth gear there, so. They really did. I, I'm thoroughly impressed how they continued to manage to really force Ataraxia to play their pace and their kind of game. They were in control of all the timings, all the engages. Oh, yeah. They played it really, really smart, uh, smart. And even though Ataraxia ended up being back again on, uh, let's say, their comfort picks on what really worked for them, as you mentioned, on uh, Esperanza, I believe. They just couldn't make it work. Uh, really, really, really great rematch there. Let's uh, actually listen in to the winning comes and hear what they had to say. I can't play. Yeah, we, we can. can. Trust, trust, we can. Trust, yeah, we can. Yeah. Yeah. They can't touch. Late. We can not touch. Tracer is late. Tracer is late. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. I'm, I'm, I'm a monkey. I'm a monkey. Lu, Lu, Lu. Tracer, touch me. Tracer, Tracer, Tracer. Let's go, Mara, 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 Mara. Ripper, 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 Ripper. Ripper, 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 Ripper. Ripper, Ripper, Ripper. Ripper, Ripper, Ripper. Ripper, Ripper, Ripper. Monkey one, monkey one, monkey one. Ripper, Ripper. Oh, nice. Well fucking done. Crazy. Yeah. Well effing done indeed. Well done. Well done. Um. One of them has a very gentle voice. I know. Oh, I, I thought she, the same thing. That was very soothing. I know, right? I know. Like, that felt really nice to listen in. <laughs> like, I wasn't stressed at all. Uh, but, yeah, uh, interesting, of course, to see, uh, or rather hear, those uh, final cons. Uh, generally, I think this team really impressed. At Araxia, I do believe that most people would have expected them to win. Not just this match, but generally the group. They expect right. them to be the first one coming out of the group and heading into the main event. Alas, it shall not be. They are not done yet. They will get a ch second chance in an elimination match. But for now, we have to say congratulations, of course, uh, to uh, the uh, opposition. It's been awesome to see how closely matched these two teams are as well. You know, in Swiss, as I said, best of three, anything can happen. But these two teams, you can tell they have their own style of how they like to play the game. And the way they match up is very interesting. And you saw it evolve as the series went on and you know you have to put a lot of respect on the peace and love I think they did a great job a lot of teams would have lost that Esperanza in such a convincing fashion and been like well we're in a lot of trouble for the rest of this series so keeping that composure bringing it back you know they deserve to be the number one seed in this group yeah for Absolutely. sure I think I think it's extra impressive considering that they're they're basically just a pickup team right um, so it's not like they had that good old-fashioned team cohesion they've been playing with each other for a long while while as on the other side of course with Ataraxia like the majority the core of that team have been playing together for, for quite a bit uh, enough already of course uh, that the cohesion that synergy should be there and they shouldn't be the ones to be forced into positions where they have to throw all their alts into a fight and hope that they somehow manage to snack a win yeah N no scrims fun mixed team there you go. Yeah. That's the tagline. Hey, and they came fourth in Swiss too, which is kind of nuts. Both of these teams, uh, like we and Scott are mentioning at the top of the series, they lost to the best teams. Like, they just, they lost to, like, Space Station. They lost to Ants. Like, they lost to the teams that people would uh, expect them to lose to. Um, so, I think, especially in the upper portions of, uh, or like, I say the, the mid portion of the brackets, and especially going into the main event, it's extremely competitive. And I wouldn't be too surprised seeing Ataraxia also go through in their group. 
I want a salty run back in the round of eight uh, bracket. I oh, want yeah. to run back one more time. I want to see this so we can once and for all close this out because, as I said, you know, you, you have to just say peace and love are the better team so far. They've, they've done it twice in a row. Yes, it's been close, but... You know, when you have a guy like this, Psycho and the Tracer, Psycho and the Echo as well on that Esperanza was also going nuclear. So, absolutely deserve player of the match. 100%. And this is the most important factor of a lot of teams right now is the Tracer player. Like, the Tracer player needs to be, like, switched on 100% of the time. We saw Shax obviously get subbed out for Daned in this situation. Um, but with uh, Psycho also being able to play the Echo and change up their style and change up for, depending on map type, not only do you have a, just a ridiculous Tracer, the Echo looked great. The copies uh, specifically looked really good. Just really forcing, like you can see it right here, just forcing the enemy backline just to, hey, you have to deal with me first before you get it through everybody else. And that's what the Echo really does is just buy time and just waste the time and supports and hopefully land a nice little double kill too right but uh, at the end of the day the traces they have to be top they have to be top tier and uh, i think psycho proved that today couldn't agree more let's actually dive into our post game interview because a beat is uh, standing by for a quick chat after getting that dub a beak thank you so much for joining us congrats on yet another victory mm -hmm. against one and the same another team one. let's let's talk about this yeah just another one in the back you know uh what gave you the upper hand once again why do you guys just seem to have their number well um we beat them in swiss with no scrims and then we started scrimming so it was pretty obvious we we're gonna win <laughs> we, we gave them two maps for fun to be honest i think uh, that's very, that's very nice of you. Four like fun that. team giving uh, giving away four <laughs> fun maps. I really like it a bit. <laughs> are you okay? Are you going to start screaming like SSG ends and stuff? Like what's going on? What's the plan moving on? Um, okay, I may have lied. We did maybe six hours of scrims, three blocks. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's better than nothing. It doesn't right? count. They've been screaming for weeks. They've been screaming for weeks. Yeah, that's it. I, well, I actually have a question. Well, it, Esperanza, <laughs> that felt like a turning point, at least for Atraxia. You know, they seem to have your number the way they moved around that map. How did you guys sort of regroup after that map and win the next two? Um, after Esper, we just said we're playing like... Um, I guess, you can assume the word I'm going to say, but... And then we just... <laughs> we just Trash? Yeah. Yep. 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 And we showed it on the second map. And then everyone started screaming. High, high energy comms, you know. We just shoot, it shot them sounded and very really. soothing. We we listened in a few times. It was actually very soothing. Like <laughs> some of you have very like gentle voices, which is <laughs> quite nice, honestly, to listen yeah. into. Uh, let's talk about your your team in general. Uh, it's to my understanding that you're the team leader, the captain, uh, but you're also kind of running all the things in the back end. Was it just a completely pickup team, like really just for fun? Um, well. Uh... Four of our team is have played together before. We're just a group of friends. They won contenders last year with Munich, if you guys remember, in the Junk Queen meta. So it's like those four plus me, Ice, and Loren. So it's like a it's like a core, but like we're just playing for fun. And we didn't expect to get so far. I like that. Now we're here. I mean, with the power of friendship, you got it done. Uh, now, of course, your eyes are set on a main event. Is there any team in there you're really itching to play? And if so, which one would that be and why? Um, probably EXO, because uh, we want to establish ourselves. We got top four in Swiss, but we want to properly establish ourselves in the in the beak four, you could say. <laughs> Legend. We love that. We love that. Well, we can't wait to see that happening or not. Either way, it's gonna be a fun to watch you guys go at it again. Thank you so much for joining us, and best of luck in the main event. Thank you.